to page one. Page two is what we have in the next box, which was to rehabilitate some military But but me were concerned, Bill. Charlie, a yard is so why I said, How much for instance, this is the northern part of this country? So, very easy, 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 so that is just one, and then the last one um, has to do with uh, putting in the departments, uh, uh, red line, most technical departments, uh, in the world, which has to do with the technical departments. We have to focus on the So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Taking of Accra, Central Region, Western Region, uh, that's the Southern Command, and a bit of uh, uh, Volta Region. Then we have the Central Command. So, Bono Ahafo, Kumasi, and a bit of Eastern Region, it's all part of the Central Command. Then we have all called the Northern Command, the original three regions of the North. But even before, it used to be two commands, but now it's three. It used to be Southern and then Northern Command. And the Northern Command was headquarters in Kumasi. But it's been changed to three. This project was designed for the Central Command. And it was approved by Parliament and signed on the 5th of November 2008 for the Southern Command under then President Kufo. No, uh, Northern, no Central Command under then President Kufo by Minister Kandapa. You know, it started in 2007. By 2008, they had done all the parliamentary work, done all the approvals, everything. When the government changed hands, the new government decided to move it from the Central Command to the Northern Command. With the Central Command, it was located at Sofo Line. Sofo Line. But then the new government also realized that, oh, apparently they had done a, a flyover around the area. So land was becoming a very scarce resource. It was Sofo Line because they had then moved a, a chunk of the armed forces from 
the hospital, the G area, to the new uh, Kwadaso area, so that it will be very close for the soldiers to assess it. You, could, you can realize that if a soldier is supposed to assess the hospital right now from where it is to this place, it's a bit far. So they wanted it to be close. So the new government decided that no, they will move it from Central Command to Northern Command. Northern Command is headquarters in Tamale. So they said, okay, we are now going to build a hospital in Tamale. But you will know that once that happens, the, the MPs around here will not agree. Yes. So it became a huge political battle in parliament. Here and there, here and there. Then the government decided, okay, we are not going to build it in Tamale any longer. It's bringing problems for us. We'll take it to 37 military hospital. It didn't end the political furore because at 37, the drawings were changed. Everything was done. They even cut short. They cut short for the hospital, the construction to begin. And I remember Chief Mensa and uh, this man, uh, Napo. Napo and this man, uh, Benito. They were firing, furious and firing in parliament. They won't understand why it's moved from Kumasi uh, to Tamale and now 37. They will not agree. So finally, the government decided, okay, if that's okay, we'll bring it back to where the original place was. <coughs> and when they came, there was no land at the Sofo line. They got a land at Afare here, which then was under uh, Benito. Uh, they, they got land here, and that's how come that the hospital is now here. So you realize that within that period, it took them six years from the day that they signed the contract to that first day that there was a shovel here to start the construction, 2008 to 2014. That's, that's what accounts for that one. That's why I told you it's more political. They will not know. But of course, I know. That's what, that's what caused that problem. And all the records are in my office. You will see, they'll go to cabinet, they'll have a discussion. Everything is, is there. That's what, that's what brought all these changes. And that's why, uh, instead of the 42 months, we are almost 16. 14 years, eh? <laughs> and, and we haven't completed the hospital. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. you raised the challenge of finance, if I heard you right. And through the presentation as well, we are commissioning or operationalizing this facility by the close of the year, if I'm right. I want to know whether you have done the reconciliation with the government for the releases to enable you to complete this job. I want you know, <laughs> more explanation to that. Because if the government is unable to release the fund to you, as you are saying, it means that you can't complete it. But you have been told today that the project will be operationalized by December. So let's see how you are reconciling it. Thank you. I'm happy that uh, the select committee of parliament is here, uh, the honorable minister is here, uh, create this occasion. So we as contractors, uh, we are very able to really implement the program that we have brought. But, uh, Having been, a parliamentary, uh, uh, being in Parliament before, I know what you can do to support him to answer the question you have asked. <laughs> yes, sir. Two issues. I will tackle this issue first about the funding, uh, and then I'll come to this one and let you understand one or two things. 
So the contractor came with a claim that the $180 million that we gave him, he will not be able to complete the hospital. In 2018, that we have delayed, prices have doubled, sometimes tripled. So sincerely, he will not be able to complete the hospital if we stick to the fact that he should complete it with the 180 million. Because we signed the contract in 2005, you know, 8th, 25th November. He was expected to use 42 months to complete the hospital. We never started, we never started the hospital itself through our own fault as government for six years. And so he would not be able to complete it. So he made a claim of $50 million to us. In fact, a little over $50 million, just $50 something million to addition, 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 addition yeah. to the ministry. We, we asked AG and all the advisors, the AG from finance, we went there, and then they said yes. If we look at the matter, and two things, we need this hospital. Secondly, if the contractor were to carry it forward, we may, we may lose the issue. So he has a, a point. We should look at it. We, we went into negotiation, and finally we came to a figure of 19 point something million for him. That's because he insisted 30 million as we negotiated and negotiated and negotiated. Finally, we agreed that, okay, some 19 million will do for you to complete the whole thing. That's the phase one of the hospital so that this was 500 little bed hospital can keep running. The Minister for Finance did advance half of that money to him in December 2021 so that he can continue. That's where we are where we are today. He's looking for the other balance to continue. We've assured him that we've made that commitment, so they should continue. Whether we pay them or we don't pay them, we'll continue. We will pay them, 100%. We will pay them. Even though we have some issues that we'll tackle with them based on that, because we and finance have also raised some issues, but we are dealing with that one. All we can assure them is that they should make sure that by December 14th, we are coming back here to come and commission the hospital. Uh, there is, we always owe people. So it doesn't mean that if you, you are looking for nine million, we cannot get all the nine million for you, then you say you are not going to complete the work. We know that you need more money because things have gone very hard, but we will pay you the money. Just make sure you stick to your timelines. By December 14, 15, we'll come and commission the hospital. And then we'll, call, we'll all begin to talk of phase two. Because you have not even finished phase one, you are talking of phase two. But I wanted you to see this particular thing. I don't want you to move away with this particular figure that this is the scope of the hospital. There were changes that were made around 2010, 2012. 2015. 2015 to this, this particular thing. So in, in 2010, the, okay, that's not that one. 2015, one, this one. There were some changes that were made called trade-off. So we lost some of the staff housing. So you are not going to have staff housing, but you are not going to get the 105 staff housing. Otherwise, as MPs, you come and you don't see 105 staff housing, you begin to ask, ah, but how come that they have short changed this? You say the 105 staff housing, you don't have it. There were some trade offs that they had to make. One was that at the time, 2015, they realized that there was no consultant from the Minister of Defense. And they were of the view at that time that if you didn't have a, a consultant that worked for the Minister of Defense and were depending on the consultant from the contractor, we are not going to get the sort of quality we're looking for. So they had to trade off some of the housing to get, a, uh, to get that. I think the other one had to do with the Moji. Central command, Central command, and then I think more three or something. Yeah, so they increased them. I think the number was originally 50. And then they then increased it to 153 to cater for, because a big hospital like that, they thought that 50 was too small. So they, they lost some of the staff housing to, uh, to get dead bodies a place to sleep. <laughs> and then two, the central command. Like I told you, it was north, uh, uh, south and north command. Two commands. Now they, they did central command, so they needed to build the headquarters of the central command, just like they were building the northern command headquarters. So they lost some of it also to cater for that. So you won't see the exact <coughs> component being the 105 star housing as we see. So, uh, the it, minister, the 
public health. Public health. Public health. This particular hand was yeah, also uh, brought in the trade-off. The trade -off. So I, I don't want you to go um, out thinking that, oh, but where are the staff housing 105? It's not there. And then they say they will commission you no. Know, what is currently the scope is what you are seeing. And, and I think that the last uh, I didn't know what done to affect the buildings itself in 2015. There was an addendum that I signed, but that had to do with the money. The, this, uh, what is it? The, 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 the extra, the, the variation that we had to do to make sure that they were finished. Because it, the truth is that the contractor was very blunt. I can't finish the job, the money is finished. It's as simple as that. After 14, after 12 years, there, there was no money any longer for him to, to, to work with. So we needed to, to do that. We, did, we took it to uh, Central Tender, we took it to Value for Money, we took it to everything, and then we got that figure and we're, we're, we're satisfied. Even though he's not satisfied, we think that that money should be enough for them to finish. And once they are giving us a deadline of December, we are almost certain that by December, if we keep to eat, they will do that. As a government, we owe a few other people. It's not only you who are going to owe. So don't say that if you don't pay, we are going to stop work. No. In December, I'm coming back here with a committee to make sure that we'll commission this hospital. Yeah. I was supposed to be here uh, last week, last week, Wednesday, with the Select Committee on Defense. Okay. I invited them that was coming, so I wanted them to accompany me. But then, because of one or two uh, issues, I had to postpone it. And likely, your chairman told me that you were coming here. So I just said, oh, if that's the case, then why, why don't you come? And let's alter this place. Let's see the stand of work. Let's see where we are. So that we don't repeat the mistakes we have made. I don't think that we should build a hospital over six, 16 years. It's not, it's not a good thing. I think that in, in future, we must make sure that if it's three years, it's three years, and then we'll move on there. But we we'll got a good hospital, from what I see. I've been here two, two or three times, and I'm positive that we'll get a very good hospital. But let's do the tour. Uh, let's see what it is. Uh, if there are places you still want to visit that are not part of the tour, let's visit the place and then we can ask questions and get clarifications. Chairman, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. It looks like forever. It's a, very, it's a comment anyway. For me, when you spread it out, I thought it is almost the whole hospital you are doing again. So uh, I'm skeptical, but maybe you have to convince me. Then my second question has to do with, Honorable Minister, what's the name of the hospital? Some people call it a fire military. Today I'm seeing 500 bed. Do you have a name? So you answer, please. <laughs> then the last one. As part of our um, oversight, we've told a lot of hospitals that have been built in this country. And one major challenge we've seen is how equipment and sensitive equipment have been handled. In fact, it's appalling and so sad that we've gone to some of our teaching hospitals and equipment that were installed for service delivery are lying there with because training, proper training was not done, proper manpower was not selected for this kind of training, and just a simple fluctuating electricity, a whole equipment is off and it's lying there like a white elephant. In fact, as a committee, it is one big concern for us. I want to believe the minister has got the right caliber of men to be trained, to man, the, especially the imaging, the equipment I've seen. It was only recently Kolobu got these new equipment. When we visited Kolobu last week, they were now showing us new equipment they've had. What's the guarantee and what's the assurance that this equipment will, be, will stand there three years warranty and beyond? Those are my questions. Thank you very much. My interest is varied but at this point uh, we would also want to know the mix of clients you are expect on our minister or who is in charge of the project access access to um, only military persons or the the, the kind of uh, mix of um, clients that we are expecting to be here um, also another very sensitive part of what we attach so close and dear to us is what he said, is equipment. So in this facility, as we go around, by the end of the day, we want to see and have an understanding of the kind of materials or 
uh, equipment you are bringing on board, um, laboratory, the brand, where the warranty, maintenance, service, training, and then we can ask you in December as they are operating what you said, what we are saying, how it's installed, how you have test run it, how it's able to sustain, be sustained. So we are extremely passionate about this because a lot of money has gone down the drain. There are times contractors have said we'll bring item A and it gets to be item B because they cost safe and it becomes a white elephant after six months, no value. So whenever you are speaking on equipment, you should know that at the end of the day, we need a detailed understanding of what it is expected to be and we'll measure it with when we come as operation starts. All right. We are bringing in. And, uh, yes, let me. program is approved, the next stage is for them to give us personnel that would be trained per the program topics. And when the training is delivered, we issue a training report to the ministry. Now, during training, and we've had that experience in WA, we've had that experience in Medina, and then lately, Chopo Prasso. Sometimes, uh, when the training starts, uh, the trainees, some of whom are brought from outside the country because of these different brands, <coughs> maybe uh, a trainer that was targeted initially suddenly is not available, either he's had other commitments or he's not well or whatever. So we get back again to the ministry to explain this that this trainer is not available now, but we will arrange whenever the trainer is available, then we will inform you so that the training can be delivered. There are also instances where the ministry itself may not have the requisite personnel for a particular training program. And that we also arrange with them that as and when they get the requisite personnel, then we will arrange to do the training. Uh, there was a particular model we did at uh, WA. We delivered the training at WA. And the hospital didn't have personnel for a certain model. When we started the training at uh, Msoko, the hospital informed us that they now have, they have now recruited uh, the, the, the doctors for that particular equipment. So we arranged and they came to join the training at the Soko. And that was done successfully and they went back. So there is a lot of flexibility during the, the, the training program. But the important thing uh, is that we do this thing closely with the employer. And even in Soko, 
an evaluation. Of course, we write a report and submit to the ministry, but then they went later to conduct their own evaluation. And they came back to give a feedback that some of the courses, uh, it appeared the trainees didn't quite understand it very well, which was not reflected in the training questionnaire that we administered. And we pointed this out to the ministry. We said, well, look at the training questionnaire we administered. See the responses that were given. Because they marked highly for the trainer, marked highly for the training uh, program, the courses, level of understanding. But nonetheless, once you, you are saying that they haven't understood this well, we are willing to conduct the training once more. So we, we did that. We got the trainers to go back and then to conduct the training again. So these are all the ways we ensure that at the end of the day, the training is well uh, understood, is undertaken and well understood. And uh, even beyond the training, we have three years, uh, one year warranty, and then two years post warranty maintenance period. So during the three years after handover, we are still available to support uh, the hospital administration. Right. By issue of uh, sustainable flow of water, uh, what is the strategy? Yeah, it's a big facility in an area I'm sure the water systems are not so developed in the surrounding and goes over. What is the strategy? Water sewage. Yeah. Sewage water. Flow water. Yes. Flow, we have flow two water. systems here. One for the irrigation, for water system, for rain system. This is system. And another system for sewage. Sewage, we have special units for the Internet. It is written. All the unit equipment, it is, uh, it is upgraded and updated with the special software and the connection together to, for a good consultation. Even with the internal consult, uh, uh, consultation offices of oh, so the the tele yeah. telemedicine. Yes, telemedicine so, okay, and telecommunication. Okay. All the equipment, radiology, also it is possible. Okay. So we can, the can say, uh, for the leadership you have, a leadership you can ask, otherwise we should go. And it is about the hospital position system. You can attest to the quality of facilities and equipment that uh, you give us. Uh, quite recently, there was a media reportage about Afari Hospital, which was negative. I remember I heard something like equipment, high cost equipment, have been left to the vagaries of the weather. And I didn't hear a response from EDI. And when you sit down for these things to happen, it will go to dent your, your credibility and your image as a company. Because I know you cannot do that. You import equipment and then you leave it to the vagaries of the weather uh, and at the cost of the state. So sometimes do something about your PR because you, I know you are going to be around. You are going to build food hospitals no, for us this point. and you should help us. A section of the public, a section of the public or a group of politicians will come and just dent the image of the good thing that you are doing here. So, so I think you need to tackle that issue. Mr. Minister, you know, as a company, working for the Republic of Ghana. We don't want to intersect ourselves into the political landscape. So we try to, as much as possible, hold our gun and maybe use other means. And that is why, if you recall, some months thereafter, we took some pressmen here around to sort of set the record, the record straight. We don't want to be seen to be meddling in the local politics because we are working for the Republic of Ghana. So we try as much as possible to be in the middle line. But how be it? We are taking your advice. If there's anything, we'll try and do quick responses so that at the end of the day, uh, our image will not be dented. This hospital that you are seeing, the first of its kind in the West Africa, the first of its kind in the Sub-Sahara. And we can assure you that when it is completed, the name of Ghana will be lifted high. But to what Honorable has said, uh, soon after that uh, reportage, we, the minister uh, sent his deputy 
His deputy was here together with the Ashanti Regional Minister. And they came with the whole press. And what was reported as equipment left to the vagaries of the weather were apparently outdoor units. There were outdoor units, uh, gas, gas cylinders, and then uh, the outdoor units of air conditioners. Yes. And, also and, and, the, and the minister told them, go out there and see for yourself. I'm not going to make any defense on behalf of EDI. Go and verify yourself. And the press went out and saw that there was really nothing left uh, to, 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 to the weather. Yeah, so that was why we didn't have to say anything. So we are good. Yeah. Also, okay. they have claimed that some equipment is already delivered to site. It will not deliver to site. It's like a man. I know. They take some exhaust, they find the photo out of the unit and see the same.